Right, so the first question here is asking us to solve the equations, uh, rather it's saying without solving the equation, determine the nature of roots of the following equations. So the first thing that you need to understand for you to know or to determine the nature of roots, you need to understand that um, what we've been given here are quadratic equations. And then these quadratic equations are always in the form, uh, quadratic equations are always in the form ax squared plus bx then plus c. This is a form of quadratic equations. And we, we all know to say this is equal to zero, right? So from there, the other thing you need to understand is that the formula of the quadratic equation or the formula method of solving quadratic equations is given by x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, then everything divided by 2a. So it is from this equation that we get what is known as the discriminant. So we use the discriminant to determine the nature of roots of any quadratic equation. So the discriminant denoted by D is simply just what is under the root there. So the discriminant is equal to B squared minus 4AC. So now what happens if the discriminant is less than zero? So if the discriminant is less than zero, it means that um, when you find the solution of B squared minus 4AC, the answer that you get to be a negative number because we know to say only negative numbers are less than zero. So if you get a negative number in this part, what happens if you get a negative number or if you have a negative number under the root? You discover that the square root of any negative number gives us an imaginary number. So if the discriminant is less than zero, means that the type of roots that you are going to have for that uh, particular quadratic equation are known as imaginary, uh, imaginary number, uh, rather imaginary roots. So you can either call them imaginary roots or complex roots. Because according to complex numbers, we know to say the square root of negative one is equal to i. So if you have, the discriminant is less than zero, it means that you have imaginary or complex roots. And then if the discriminant is greater than zero, um, meaning if after finding the solution of B squared minus four AC, you get a positive number, which is greater than zero, or you just get any positive number, this implies that the given quadratic equation has, uh, has two, um, distinct or different, you can say two different or two distinct real roots. So it has two distinct or different real roots. This is what it means. And then if the discriminant is equal to zero, it means that you're going to have equal real roots. So these equal real roots are also going to be two. I'm sure you've solved a quadratic equation uh, rather a quadratic equation where you get maybe the first answer is x is equal to two, even the second answer is also x is equal to two, which implies that the solution is just equal to two. So such quadratic equations are the ones that we call, uh, or the ones that we say they have equal roots. So when the discriminant is equal to zero, means that the given quadratic equation has equal real roots. Uh, so that is what it means. Okay. So let us try to apply what I've just written here in these uh, expressions that we've been given. So when we get the first equation there, which is 4x squared plus 20x plus 25 is equal to zero. So when you get the first equation there, and then you begin to I mean, you, you've been told to analyze this or to determine whether it has, uh, I mean, to determine the nature of roots that it has. 
you first has to you first have to compare this to this expression there. So meaning the value of a in this expression is simply just equal to the coefficient of x squared, which is um, four, and then the value of b becomes the coefficient of x, which is twenty. Then the value of c is the coefficient, or rather, it's the constant in this case, which is twenty-five. When you check c, there is a constant which is twenty-five. So now to find the nature of roots of this equation, we're going to use the discriminant. So the discriminant is equal to um, b squared minus 4ac. So d will now be equal to, well, this b squared, well, this b I'm going to put 20. So this will be 20 squared minus 4a. While well, this a I'm putting four. Then while well, this c I'm putting 25. So when you simplify this expression, we're going to get um, we're going to get 20 squared will give you 400, and then we say minus four times 25 to give us 100, and then times four to also give us 400. So 400 minus 400, this is equal to zero. So when you check the value of d is equal to zero, and then we said if the value of d is equal to zero, then the given quadratic equation has what are known as equal roots. Okay, so let's move on to this one. So even this one, we do the same. We place uh, the values of A, B, and C in the discriminant. But before we do that, or oh, let's start with this one. I skipped, I want to see. So we place the values of A, B, and C in the discriminant. So the first thing that we do is we identify which one is our A, B, and C. So A is equal to one, then B is equal to four, then c is equal to seven in this expression here. So our discriminant is given by uh, b squared minus four ac. Uh, what is b? I'm going to put four. So this will be four squared minus um, four. My value of a is one, and then the value of c is seven. So four squared will give me 16, and then minus uh, four times seven, this one will give me 21, oh, rather 28. So 16, four squared 16, four times one, four times seven, um, four times one is four, four times seven, the answer is 28. So when you subtract uh, 16 uh, from 28, you get 12. So this would be, I mean, when you subtract uh, 28 from 16, you get negative 12 in this case. So this 12 is a negative number. Hence the discriminant is a negative, meaning it's less than zero. So we say the discriminant is less than zero. And then when the discriminant is less than zero, this implies that the given, um, it, it implies that the given quadratic equation, which is this one here, has imaginary or complex roots. So it has imaginary or complex roots. So this one has, a, has complex roots. So I forgot to explain one concept. What does it mean when they say um, this quadratic equation has equal roots? And what do they mean if they say this quadratic equation has imaginary roots? What does it imply? What does it denote or what does it show when you are sketching the graph? So when D is equal to zero, okay, let me start first with the greater than. So when D is greater than zero, we said this one has two different roots, two different real roots. So when you solve this quadratic equation, if it has two different real roots, when you solve it, you are going to get two different answers. So these two different answers, when you're sketching the quad, there was this gra the graph of a quadratic equation. If let's say the, the first value that you found is x is equal to a, then the second value is x is equal to b. This implies that when you, when you sketch this quadratic equation, it's going to meet the x-axis at two points, which are a and b. That's what it means. And then when d is less than zero, means that the given quadratic equation has complex or imaginary roots. Uh, so 
when you have such a, such a situation, it means that after sketching the quadratic, um, I mean, after sketching the, uh, the graph of quadratic equation, uh, you discover that this uh, equation will not meet the x axis at any point. So it can either be like that, or like that, or it can be like that, but as long as it doesn't, uh, it, it does not meet the axis, the x axis. That's what it means. And then if you have maybe d is equal to zero, if d is equal to zero, we said it has equal roots. So for such, um, for such equations, these are the equations that you find after sketching, you find maybe this uh, quadratic equation is just meeting the x-axis at one point, which is, for instance, maybe if you found x is equal to two as your answer, means that it's going to meet the x-axis at two. That's what it means. So for this one, we found equal roots. So after sketching this uh, equation, you discover that you have something like this. But since the value of A this side is less than zero, I'm going to teach you how to sketch quadratic equations. Yeah, so since the value of A is less than, I mean, is greater than zero, it means that it has a minimum value, meaning we expect to have something like this. So after solving this quadratic equation, you are going to expect to have a graph to come out like this to face up because it has a minimum value. This one also has a minimum value. This one also has a minimum value, but it does not meet the x axis at any point. Why? Because we discovered that we discovered that it has complex roots or the value of d was less than zero for this one. So to solve this one, you always, I mean, you have to rearrange this into the form of a quadratic equation, which we know to be a x squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. So when we rearrange this equation here, we're going to have 16x squared. When 40x comes this side, we'll have negative 40x. And then when negative 25 comes to the other side, we have positive 25 there. Then we say this is equal to zero. So the other thing that we need to do here is, is now to introduce the, the, the discriminant rather. So the discriminant D is equal to, so the discriminant D is equal to B squared minus four AC. So now in this case, we are going to, we are going to uh, replace the values of B, A and C in this uh, discriminant. So B is just a coefficient of X squared. So in this case, we have negative 40. Uh, so when you, we have negative 40 squared, then we say minus four, the value of A is 16. Then the value of C is 25. So the value of D will now be equal to, um, 40 squared, so 40 squared will give us, um, will give us uh, 1,600, when we say minus, the other thing we have is 4, uh, 16 and 25. So when you multiply 4, 16 and 25, you're getting um, 1,600 again, because four times 25, is 100, 100 times 16, you get 1,600. So D is equal to as this minus that, we get a zero. So this one also has, um, this one also has equal roots because the discriminant is equal to um, zero. That's what it means. So you do the same with the remaining questions. You can try to do them then in case you are doubting your answer, you can send it over to my WhatsApp line. Okay. So let's uh, look at the other part. Oh, do we have any questions about uh, the, the types of roots, determining the, type of, the, the types of roots? Do we have any questions? Okay, 
So if you don't have questions, let's move on to the next part of uh, quadratic equations. Questions. 